we have done before grams to moles and moles to grams. But we've never put it together where we go from moles to moles in the center. And this is where we use our balanced um, equations. So we're going to be using balanced equations to be able to go from moles of one substance to moles of another. And I liken this into making, um, uh, sorry, to making peanut butter jam sandwiches for a large amount of people. I need to know how much bread I need, how many um, canisters of peanut butter, and how many canisters of jelly. Okay? I have to have a recipe. It's like trying to make cookies without having a recipe and saying, oh, these are all the ingredients. I'll just throw them in a, bo in a thing, mix them up, and throw them in the oven, and I'll have cookies. Not necessarily good ones, right? So in order to have good cookies, I've got to have a recipe. And that's what our balanced equation is for us. So when we talk about stoichiometry, stoichiometry has to have a balanced equation. And we have to have moles in order to be able to use this equation to do the balancing. Okay, we have to have a common unit. The common unit is moles. You can't go from grams to, directly to grams. You have to go from grams to moles because, remember, we have a mole of elephants versus a mole of ants. They weigh different. Okay, but I can still have that same amount. So we're going to practice this on the practice problem and a couple others. This, by the way, is going to be notes for you. So if you want to just write at the top right now so you know you don't have to turn this in, write notes because you're going to need this to do your next assignment next time. And you'll want to be able to take it home with you. You won't want to turn it in. OK, so the first thing that we want to do, did you pick up the worksheets? Go get them. You're going to need them. First thing that we want to do at the at at the beginning is balance the equation. We've done this before. We've done it a lot. So let us balance this equation. I would put up my piece of paper again. I'm going to grab a piece of paper here real fast. I'm just going to put it underneath real quick. Okay, and I would write on that C H O, right? Cho. Because this is a what type of reaction? Combustion. Okay, so on the left I have three carbons, on the right I have one. So I'm going to have to put a three here to get my three carbons. On the left I have eight hydrogens, on the right I have two. So I'm going to need to put a four to get eight. On the left I have two oxygens, on the right I've got to be careful. I've got three times two, which is six, plus four times one, which is four gives me a total of 10. So what do I need to do on the left? Put a 5. And then we're all balanced with this. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so I'm going to move my, whoa, I'm going to move my papers here. <laughs> Made more. We'll just cut them out of here. Okay, so I've moved my paper. I just made way too many. All right. Let me erase this up. Woo, hello. Everybody's getting sick that's watching this. Okay. All right, so the big thing is now we're going to use this ratio that we just made with our balanced equations to convert from one thing to another. So as I read, this is lots of story problems we're going into now. Okay? I like to identify what I've got and where I'm going. So first of all, I want to find out how many moles of CO2 will be produced by the reaction of 1.0 is what I want you to put there, mole of O2. So I'm starting with O2. I'm going to start with 1.0 mole O2. I'm going to do the factor label thing. I want to get rid of O2 and I want to get to CO2. So I look in front of O2 and I look in front of CO2 and that will give me the ratio that I need to put in. I want to get rid of oxygen, so oxygen goes on the bottom. So for every 5 moles of oxygen, I get 3 moles of CO2. Moles of oxygen cancel out, and my answer is what? You should have your calculators out. 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6. Six zero because we got two six six moles of CO2 and then go ahead and circle or square your answer. Well, moles are great, but usually we're working in grams. 
So on the next one here, we've got how many grams of water will be produced. I'm going to use 1.0 again. In 1.0 moles of CH3H8. Okay, so again I start with what I'm given. 1.0 mole C3H8. Set up my factor label. I'm going to come back up to the top and I'm going from CH3 to H2O. Okay, I want to get rid of CH3 so it goes on the bottom. One mole. CH3, and I'm writing it underneath because I know there's going to be one more conversion, and four moles of water. So at this point, I can cancel out my moles of propane. Okay, but I'm not to where I want to be, which is grams. Well, we've gone from moles to grams before. And if we look at our mole map, we start in the center, we're going right. So in one mole, of H2O, I would add up two hydrogens and one oxygen, and I've done that so many times I can help you there. This is what it is. And then I can cancel out my moles of H2O. Since the bottoms are ones, all I have to do is take four times 18.015, and I've got my answer. Yes? So that's C3H8, so that's CH3. Yeah, sorry, I, this should be C3H8. I have, I have. Yeah, anyway, that was a Freudian slip today. Sorry. Okay, so what else do we got? We have two significant figures. Give me the answer to two significant figures. Plug it through your calculator. 4 times 18.015. So 72 grams of water. And we've got that one. Okay, I'm going to scroll up just a little bit so we have a little bit of room at the bottom, but try and keep the equation there. Okay, going through this one now. How many grams of propane will react with 3.2 grams of oxygen? Okay, I always start with what I'm given, which here, I'm going to grab a thing so I can blank that out at the bottom. Okay, so 3.2 grams of oxygen Okay, I can't use the bounce equation until I get into moles. So the first thing I need to do is change the grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. So I know moles of oxygen is going to go on the top because that's what I want to get to. On the bottom, I take 2 times the mass of oxygen, which is 15.999. And that'll be my grams of oxygen. Everybody okay with that? Now I could just put it in my calculator real quick and have figured out it's 31.998 and put that number in, that's fine. Okay? Either way, if you write it this way, 2 times 15.999, are you, are you doing your calculator to start with? That's all right. Either way. All right. So now I'm going from oxygen, let me change back to green here, oxygen right here to propane here. So, I look at what's in front of the oxygen. It's a 5. I want to get rid of oxygen, so I put it on the bottom. 5 moles of O2. I want to get to the propane. There's a 1 in front of that. 1 mole of C3H8. That's a funny 3 because it caught. Sorry. Moles of oxygen go out. I'm going to go ahead and scroll this up so those of you at the back of the room can see this better now. Okay, because we don't need the equation anymore. By the way, that is a 5. Okay, so now I'm in moles of C3H8, and that is a 3. It didn't do very well there. I need to figure out what the mass of that is. So on the bottom, I'm going to put 1 mole of C3H8, and on the top, I'm going to take 3 times 12.011 plus... 8 times 1.008, it's 8 or 7, it's 8, okay, and that's how many grams C3H8. I can put it in like that, or I can put this in my calculator and just give one number there. Yes? 12.011 is the mass of carbon from the periodic table, and there's three of them, C3, 
and 1.008 is the mass of hydrogen, and we have eight of them. Okay, so we need the mass of that whole thing, C3H8. I don't care if you do it in your calculator and just give me one number there. That's how you would do it as you get better. But if you need to write it out, do it. Okay, so at this point we can cross out mole and mole. Now, here's my big caution. Remember when we were doing this earlier, make sure when you hit the divide sign to divide all this, you put it in parentheses because if you don't, you're going to end up with a wrong answer. Okay, what do we get? Let me plug that through. And we got an answer brave enough. One more time. 3.8. Do we have a second? Anybody else get that? Oh, we're awake this morning. Okay. Nobody's going to second it. We're going to assume it's right. <coughs> you know what? 3.87. You got point. 0.88. We got two 0.88s. Okay, thank you for being brave. So we're going to go with this one as the answer. Okay. All right, so let's do another one. Let's get the next one out at the bottom here, the stoichiometry problems. Going forward to another page real fast. Grabbing this next one down. Oh, I cut it off. Let's try again. Okay, this should give us enough room. Okay, first step was what? Balance that equation. What do I need to do to balance that equation? Somebody help me. We got to balance the top equation first. <laughs> Okay, what about my oxygen? Oh, I heard it. What is it? It's four, three, two. Good. Because we'll need six, oxy six oxygen on both sides because the two and the three, the common factor is six. And when we do that, that makes aluminum four, so we have to put four on the other side. Okay, so a couple of you jumped ahead to the next one, which is great. We're looking for moles of Al2O3 by reacting 4.0 moles of aluminum. Okay, I always pull out stuff like this and circle and underline so I know what I'm going to and what I have. So starting with 4.00 moles of aluminum. What do I do next? You guys help me through this. Talk me through. Use what we did in the first one of above. What do we do? Look at this. When I'm in moles already, I can go right up to the equation and look at the ratio. I want to get rid of aluminum, so what goes on the bottom? Four moles of aluminum. And this is an exact conversion, so I don't need to worry about how many significant figures it's got. What do I put on the top? What are we trying to get to? Two moles, good, of Al2O3. So I'm looking at just what's in front of the Al2O3. Okay, so then I just cancel out moles of aluminum. Four divided by four times two is? Two, right? <laughs> so 2.00 moles of Al2O3. Done. Okay, let's look at the next one. On the next one here, we're looking at grams of Al2O3, and that would be formed if I use 8.00 grams of aluminum. Okay, so looking again, 
we start with what we're given, 8.00 grams AL. This one's going to be a longer conversion because we started with grams. Got to change it to moles. What do I put on top then? One mole. Good. One mole of AL. What do I put on the bottom? The mass of AL from the periodic table, which is 26 point, I can't remember that one, 982 grams of AL. Okay, at this point, grams of AL go out. Now, this is when, now I'm in moles, I can look up at the periodic table. I've got moles of aluminum right here. I want moles of what? The aluminum oxide, right? So, what do I put on the bottom? What do I put on the top? Let's go with the bottom. What do I put on the bottom first? Come on, be brave. Aluminum. I'm trying to get rid of aluminum, so I'm going to put four moles of aluminum on the bottom. What am I trying to get to? Aluminum oxide. So it's going to go on the top. So there's a two in front of it. So two moles of aluminum oxide. At this point, I can cast out moles of aluminum. Last step. Because I didn't want moles, they wanted grams. And this is the most common one because I can weigh things easy at the beginning and I can weigh things easy at the end. So I want to know how much I'm going to make. I'm going to put one mole of aluminum oxide on the bottom. Now, I don't have enough room to write this all out, but you're going to take to find the mass of this, you're going to two times aluminum's weight plus three times oxygen's weight. Somebody times that together and give me an answer. So aluminum's weight is right here, and oxygen's weight is 15.999. So two times aluminum's weight plus three times oxygen's weight, what do we get? We got an answer? How much? No, oxygen is 15.99 and I'm times it by 3. So I got to be bigger than that. You got what? Okay, let's do it together. 2 times 26.982. Plus, oh, you did the final answer. I just want the answer to this right here. Okay, plus 3 times 15.999. So here we should end up with 101.961 grams Al2O3. At this point, I can cross out moles of aluminum and moles of aluminum. Now, make sure when you put this all in your calculator, when you hit the divide sign, put this in parentheses, and for the ending number, we should end up with what? So we have three significant figures, so 15.1 and grams of aluminum. Somebody double check, make sure that's what we should have got, because these guys went ahead. And that's what I got. So we should be good. Are we okay so far? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we started with grams of aluminum. We changed it to moles because we can't use this balanced equation until we're in moles. Because that's how we get two moles. We can't use that until we're in moles. So we're in grams. We have to change from grams to moles first. Once we're in moles, then we can use the ratio to go from one compound to another compound. So that's what we did here. And then once we got into moles here, then we wanted to get back into grams, but of the aluminum oxide. So we put one mole of aluminum oxide, we added up two aluminums and three oxygens and put it here. So we went from grams to moles, from moles to moles, from moles to grams. So if you look at the left-hand side top of your paper, it sort of takes you through that whole thing, what I need to do, if, where I'm at. Okay, so this would be my answer. Okay, let's go on to the next one. I'm going to have to scroll down. So remember, it's 432. You guys can see it on your paper, but I will not be able to see it, so I'm going to rely on you. 
Okay, I'm actually going to pull it up a little bit more if I can, so it's more in the middle of the page. All right, how many grams of oxygen, I'm going to use yellow this time, how many grams of oxygen would be able to produce 3.2 grams, excuse me, 3.2 grams of aluminum oxide? So let's start with 3.2 grams of aluminum oxide. Well, lucky for us, we just added that up in the one above, didn't we? did we not, at the very end? Wasn't it like 101 point what? 101 point, say it louder for me again, 961 grams of Al2O3. So I'm trying to get it out of grams and back into moles. So I'm going to put one mole on the top. So this is sort of reversed from the one that we did just above. We're going backwards. So grams are now out. Now I'm in moles. This is where I can use that ratio that I had up above. So if we remember, and I think, let's see, we had AL with a 4 in front, and we had a 502, no, 302, right? 302 yields 2AL2O3, right? Okay, so now I'm going to look at this. I'm going to oxygen. I want to get to oxygen. I'm right here. All right, so what do I put on the bottom? What do I put on the top? What do I want to get rid of? Al2O3. So it's going to go on the bottom. So two moles of Al2O3 is on the bottom. What do I want to get to goes on the top? What am I trying to get to? Oxygen, right? So three moles of O2 goes on the top. Moles of Al2O3 go out. Now the last thing they asked me is they wanted to find the grams. So what do I need to do? Very last conversion. What am I going to put on the bottom on the very last conversion? Moles. How many? One. One mole of O2. When I go right from moles to grams, it's always one mole. What am I going to put on the top? Two times oxygen's mass, which is 15.99, which ends up being 31.998 grams of O2. Then I can go ahead and cancel out moles of O2. Remember, again, when you go to divide, put this in parentheses, close it, and let's get an answer. A unit on our answer should be grams of O2. How many significant figures should we have? Three. Yes. I have three oxygen. No, I only have two oxygen, O2. I have three moles of oxygen, but as the compound itself, I just have O2. Good question, good question. Okay. 1.50, 51, what is it? You guys, I need, a, I need a second, I need a second. It's a second, okay, there we go. All right, so this is as far as we're going to go today with stoichiometry. I don't want to blow your brains. How are you feeling? Yes, ma'am. Um, so like when, you're, when you're getting the final answer, uh -huh. so you times through the top, so you go all the way through the top, times through. Hit your divide sign, close parentheses, times all the way through the bottom, close parentheses, enter. Okay? All right, so we're going to be working on this the next couple of days with stoichiometry. We're going to work on it after we come back from break. It's one of those things that takes a little while to set in. Okay? Are you feeling okay? Because all we really did added was the mole to mole ratio. We doing okay? All right, so what we're going to do is grab that other paper that you came in with. That looks like this. Big grid. Okay. We are going to do the first one all the way across. As we do this, I want to show you the colors in your models. You're going to be getting a model kit. I guess I should show you that has all these models in it. So as I am, and you should have picked up a colored pencil thing as you came in, you saw I had them back there. Um, 
the blue, if you want to put a key on there somewhere, blue is for um, column uh, 15, which is nitrogen's family. Now, some of them only have three, but some of them have a fourth. And the fourth one is for that unshared pair of electrons. And this funky little thing, and it can be pink, or it can be gray, or it can be a flat colored one. Those are unshared pair of electrons that look like this, okay? But this is for group 15. So it can go for nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, any of those. The black is carbon. It'll have four holes. The white is for hydrogen, okay? Black is carbon's family, so any of carbon's family, carbon, silicon, geranium, tin, any of those. White is for um, hydrogen. The green and the purple and the, and the um, orange are for fluorine, chlorine, bromine, but we won't be using those. And the red is for oxygen. Now, on oxygens, it won't show the unshared pair of electrons, but you can just pretend like they're there, like that. Okay, whoops, let me go there. They, they don't put a place for them, but they are there. And the angle has been taken into account. So, as we're talking about this, when we make, um, you should have your molecular geometry paper out that has all the shapes with the um, stuff like that that I gave you. It was a one-sided piece. It had all the drawings. You remember that? Okay, I'm going to take a picture of this one real quick. just so that we can look at it for a minute. I actually will enlarge it a little bit over here so we can look at it. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to get your two different colors. You're going to need at least two different colors to do this. And since um, nitrogen's column is the blue one, I'm going to do it in blue. And phosphorus is in nitrogen's column. How many Lewis dots does it have around it? How many Lewis dots does hydrogen have around it? Look across, to get to phosphorus, we have two in the S and three in the P, so we've got a total of five. So we're going to put five dots around it. Okay, then we're going to look at the H. How many do H have around it? One, and I have three of them. So we've sort of done this before. Remember this from the one of the worksheets? Then on the next one, we're going to put them together. So we're going to go P... And then put my H's in so that phosphorus has eight around it and each hydrogen has two. Okay. Then this next part, you're actually going to build the model like I did right here. And you're going to draw it the best that you can. So in this next little area, we're going to draw. I have the blue in the center. And I had, I'm going to use pink because the other one was pink. I have that pink coming up here that represents my unshared pair of electrons. And then I have like a one going back into the plane, one coming out of the plane, and one going back into the plane. So I'm going to try to 3D draw it the best that I can from what I make. Okay, so to see how I tried to make a 3D drawing of it. And then I'm going to look at that molecular geometry page that I've got and try and figure out where this shape is. What is its shape? So if you've got that out, what shape would I be doing here? Trigonal pyramidal, good. Or trigonal, it's however you want to say it, pyramidal. But I also want you on this last one to give me the angle. Do you remember us talking about the angles? The tetrahedral was what? Do you remember? 109.5, so if you want to write these on your molecular geometry paper, you can. So a tetrahedral has an angle of 109.5. What does a, a trigonal pyramidal have? That's my unshared pair of electrons. That represents this. I did mine pink just because I didn't have a gray, and I knew gray wouldn't show up there. So I did my pink. Okay. So we got one unshared pair of electrons. It scares it down by two degrees. So this is actually 107 degrees. 
When I get to the bent, what angle would it be? 105. If I have a trigonal planar all in the plane, what angle is it between the three? 120. So think of a triangle. It's going to go 120. Okay? All right. So you're going to do the rest of these on this side. Let's flip over to the other side. The other side is where we start talking again about our IMF. The first question on the other side asks you what things are bound with hydrogen to make hydrogen bonds. Do you remember what three elements were, could be bound to make hydrogen bonds? What? One of them is nitrogen, yes. Oxygen and, and what? Fluorine, NOF, right there at the very top of the periodic table. Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine directly connected to a hydrogen is a hydrogen bond, okay? Remember, that's the strongest. What was the weakest? Do you remember what the weakest was? London Dispersion Forces, or LDFs. Okay, what was the middle one? The review. Dipole, dipole, right, the ones that have the poles. Okay, so you have two big squares on that back side. I want you to do 10 water molecules. So when we go to build a water molecule, it will look like this, right? Okay? We talked about this last time. What side of that water molecule is negative and what side is slightly positive? The delta, remember that funny looking delta? Do you remember what side was what? The top was what? Negative and the bottom was positive. Okay, so on the left hand side, don't draw anything yet. On the left hand side, yes ma'am? Yes, we're on that side. On the left hand side, it asks you to draw it in a solid. Remember we talked about a solid for water expands. Why does it expand? Because it had to arrange positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative in a grid pattern. But as a liquid, they sort of flow over each other. So you can draw water a whole bunch of different ways down there at the bottom, make it more, make it smaller, okay? Because it doesn't take up as much space water does as a liquid as it did a solid. And then put in the attractions. Now I'm going to show you with a solid. I'm only going to do a couple. You're going to need to put in 10, okay? 10 for the water and 10 for the solid. So here we go with water. So this is what I would do for water. And then I would say, oh, then I have another water here that goes like this, and it is slightly attracted here. Okay, and then I have another water over here, and it is slightly attracted here. And then I have another water here, and it is slightly attracted like this. So you're going to do 10. I've only shown you four. This would be a solid. Now, why does ice float? Well, you've got all this empty space that is air. So it floats because it's got extra air in it. Okay? I want you to do 10 water molecules on this side showing me a solid. And then for the liquid, you're going to end up tumbling them closer together. So I'm still going to be like this, but I might be tumbling like this. So they don't fit perfectly, but I can say this is sort of attracted to this, and this is sort of attracted to this. Some of them might not be attracted to anyone. Just do a mismatch on that one side, okay? All right, then when you're all done, you're going to write me a conclusion. So I'm going to pass out the model kits, and you'll each get a model kit. You need to play with them a little bit, but I want this turned in at the end of the period, okay, if possible, okay? I know we're a little short today because it's short day. All right? If you can't get it turned in today, at least get the models made so you can get the models part done. Okay?